Ya. So, uh, do you have any question? So we have, I think the course has proceeded till week three. So you must have done a demand curve or consumption, consumer behavior that is um, maximization of utility given a budget constraint that portion and from there we have derived the demand curve of an individual of a good and from that we have derived the market demand curve of a good so i think you are familiar with that all the concepts in that section that is week one then in week two we have covered the how the firms takes their decision regarding the amount of output they want to produce like mainly their input combination, optimal input combination, where they solve this following problem, that is minimization of cost given or subject to a fixed amount of output they have to produce. And from that, we get the cost function. So cost function is actually the minimum amount of cost incurred to produce the given level of output. So from there, what we have done, we have moved to one form of market that is the perfectly competitive market and that is week three. And in week three, we have uh, shown what is going to be the market outcome. That is what is the price of a good if that market is perfectly competitive. So we have discuss the assumptions of that market. That is, all the farms are small enough so that they take the price as given. And then <clears throat> we have shown that uh, increasing returns to scale or constant, if there is constant returns to scale, then we cannot determine the optimal output of each farm. So we re require decreasing returns to scale to determine the optimal amount of output of a farm in this case. So, we have done it using either continuously increasing marginal cost or a separate marginal cost. So in both the we have done both the cases. So that much we have covered now. And we have, I think, shown that it is also Pareto optimal, that the market outcome is Pareto optimal. Market means perfectly competitive market outcome is Pareto optimal. And that we have shown. Do you have any question till this portion? And so next, next fourth week is on monopoly. So monopoly is another extreme form of a market where there is only one farm and that farm determines the market price. So we have derived the optimal price and the optimal amount of output and the monopoly can do some form of price discrimination. So we have discussed first degree price discrimination, second degree price discrimination and third degree price discrimination. And we have shown that the first degree price discrimination outcome is also a Pareto optimal outcome and we have shown that it is like a bundling to this kind of so. Any any question? Yes. Feel free to ask a question. No. Means are you means is the problem set okay? Means the difficulty level of the problem set, the quiz.
and then in week five, uh, we have done game theory. So till this week three, we don't require the game theory, but uh, means we can do without game theory till more. Monopoly, perfectly competitive market and monopoly, they don't require the game theoretic tools. But when we do oligopoly or duopoly, we need game theoretic tools. So we have started the game theory. So week five and six is for the game theory. So in week five, we will do only the static games. So we will introduce the NAS equilibrium in this. And I think you have the assignment of week five is out, so you must be trying it again. So if you have any question on game theory, you can ask like what is how to find a mass equilibrium or like how to find a mixed strategy NAS equilibrium. Those kind of things. Yes. So do do I need to explain any concept till week five? Sir, uh, good evening. Yeah. Uh, sir, Nash equilibrium, can you just explain again? Because I missed some part of my videos. Uh, I mean, because of the network problems. Okay. Okay, let's take this game. Okay, take this game. Okay. Is it visible to you? So this is a game between yeah. two yeah. player, player one and player two. And there are these three, player two has three strategies, B, S, X, and player one has two strategies, B and S, or you can call them X and so also. And payoffs are like this. 4201010024132 now how to find the nas equilibrium of this game suppose player 1 plays b okay then you have to look at what is the optimal for player 2 so here you have to compare means this this and this so for player 2 optimal strategy or action is to play b okay Whenever player one plays B, optimal strategy of player two is to play B. Now, suppose player two plays B, then what is optimal for player one? B or S? If it plays S, it gets zero. If it plays B, it gets four. So it is optimal to play B. So now this BB is a NAS equilibrium. Why? Because when player one plays B, it is optimal for player two to play B. And when player two plays B, then it is 
optimal for player one to play B. So this is a Nash equilibrium. Now the question is whether there is any other Nash equilibrium. So when we have found out this Nash equilibrium, we, we can easily rule out this is not a Nash equilibrium outcome and this is not. Why? Because when player one plays B, they are player two is choosing B, not S, neither X. So that's why these are two are not a Nash equilibrium. Now, suppose player one plays S. Now, if it plays S, player two can either play B, S or X. Now, if it plays B, it gets zero. If it plays S, it gets four. If it plays X, it gets three. So, the optimal action or strategy of player two is to play S. Now, if player two plays S, Player one, if it plays B, it gets zero. If it plays one uh, S, it gets two. So the optimal action of player one is to play S. So this SS is again a Nash equilibrium. Now it can, we can easily rule out this is not a Nash equilibrium outcome. Why? Because when it plays S, player two plays S, not X. So this is not, and it plays this, not this. So this is not Nash. So only these two are the pure strategy Nash equilibrium. What is pure strategy Nash equilibrium? Pure strategy Nash equilibrium means the player one plays B with full certainty, means with probability one, and player two plays B with full certainty with probability one in this Nash equilibrium, BB. And in SS Nash equilibrium, what happens? Player one plays S with full certainty, means probability one, and player two plays S with full certainty with probability one. So this is a pure strategy Nash equilibrium. Hello, is it clear? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. So any other questions? Oh, so, yeah. Uh, so actually, I just want to ask uh, what are the basic prerequisites that should be strong to uh, score good marks in this subject so that I can get a, a nice foundation? Because I am from a science, I am from PCM stream, and I have hmm. not studied the economics that well. Hmm. See, if you are from PCM background, so you know calculus, right? So we have the mathematical tool that we are using is simple calculus. Only some of the arguments are slightly tricky. So what you do, you follow the videos. And whenever you have any problem in following the video, you simply ask a question in the discussion forum. I will definitely reply. And you see for each week, there is a tutorial also. In that tutorial, I have solved one or two questions. So you check those tutorials also properly where I mean, you will get an idea how to solve the problem. And by now I'm more or less sure that you may have got the flavor that what kind of questions you are going to get in the final exam. So it is more or less going to be mainly numerical kind of examples, questions, right? You have to find either a value or suppose you have to find a what is the market equilibrium price or what is the optimal output of a farm like this kind of thing or what is the nature of cost function that can or what is the optimal consumption bundle like those kind of things so mm, simply doing the calculus and optimization mainly so that is sufficient so i will suggest that you go through the video i have tried to be mm, as complete in terms of description as possible. Uh, but I have assumed that you know differentiation and integration. Integration we are going to use very less, but mainly differentiation and like simple optimization like first order condition, second order condition, those kind of things. But if you have still some doubt on the, those things, you can ask me now or you can ask in the discussion forum. Also. So best thing is whenever you are following a video and if you have any doubt in that portion, you simply ask a question in that portion and you send me that video where you have that doubt. 
the timing. So then I can ask, give you a very specific answer. Is it okay? Uh, yes, sir. And so one last question uh, out of the yeah. books uh, names available on the side uh, in the courses, which one is the one I should prefer more? See for uh, economic means like for week one, week two and week three and week four till these first four weeks, Helvarian intermediate microeconomics. That is the best book you can follow. Helvarian by the author is Helvarian. Uh, microeconomics, intermediate microeconomics. OK, and for game theory, you can follow. There are many books, but you can follow uh, Gibbons, a primer uh, to game theory by Robert Gibbons. But that book, I think, is not available nowadays. You can get uh, from some library or you have to look some other ways. But uh, another good book, is like by Osborne, uh, Introduction to Game Theory. Uh, there are so many. You, or you can even look at the book by Avinas Dixit. There is a game theory book, The Art of Making Strategies, I think. Avinas Dixit, so you can look at that. If you are following, but if you have any doubt, because I have done it more or less extensively, whatever is required. So if you can ask me directly questions. OK, thank you so much, sir. Sir, I just want to check one thing. Yeah. Uh, this actually equilibrium kind of a scenarios in practical sense in uh, actually day to day life. Can yeah. we apply this one in the stock market area? Because stock market is completely different. There are many players in that kind of a scenario. Uh, but I want to just check with a practical example. How where can I really understand this uh, uh, on the ground scenario? Thank you. Mainly the pricing strategies followed by the firms. Like if you are, if suppose when we will do like this hoteling models in I think week nine or 10, you will come to know about those models. There you will see that the firms, uh, what they do, they try to differentiate their product. So you can think of like the discounts they give. Like when the Amazon is giving this discount, then how, what is the strategy of the Flipkart? Those kind of things. Or when uh, I am setting a price for any product, like suppose a new product, then um, I will always look at what kind of substitutes they are there. Like we will do that when we look at um, means, um, like product differentiation, those kind of things. So how to price means when I am pricing my product, I will definitely consider how the other firms which are producing close substitutes, how they are going to price. In all these, like the best example is if you look at the Pepsi Cola and the Coca Cola, they don't compete in terms of their prices, but they compete in terms of advertisement. So, this is also there you can look at some form of a strategy. So, it is they have a multiple strategies, or in, you can say in multiple variables, like one variable is their price, and in that price, they are not competing. It is more or less remain same and it will stay like that. But they want more people, more consumer. So what they do? So they give more incentive, more uh, advertisement. So they try to take 
more bigger influencer, influencer who are going to influence them to consume those goods. So in that they are spending. So the spending is, uh, so that is their strategy. So they are spending in terms of the advertisement. Like there we can use the game theory. And another game theory is like, where we can directly use is like a bundling, like how to bundle the products. When there are one form which is suppose bundling, uh, um, like take Microsoft. Um, no, Microsoft is more or less a monopoly, but um, you like take the example of mobile phones. So some of the mobile phone companies give the charger, but some of them they don't. So this is also you can so charger is another product and your mobile phone is another product. And if you are doing it, then you are tying these two products, right? So there is both bundling and tying that is happening. Sorry, this is an example of a tying, not a bundling. But bundling is like you give uh, a fix the amount, like instead of one kg in differentiating, making it more divisible, you are making it like it is available in two or three cases, only in one kg and five kg. But some other product is available in like half kg, two kg, three kg, those kind of strategies. These are examples where you can use, where actually implicitly they have used some form of game theory. But exactly where, whether we the way we are going to derive the Nash equilibrium in each of these environments, whether they are following that, it's very difficult to say that. Why? Because see, we have taken some mathematical model, like we have, and we have assumed it cost curve, those kind of things. So in reality, those can are not very exact things. We will estimate a demand curve. One farm will estimate a demand curve in another way. Another farm will estimate in slightly different way. So the outcome may not be as close as to a Nash equilibrium output, but we can understand them using this get theory. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Actually, my interest was uh, uh, for the bottling. That means water bottling ah. and tire industry, tire industry, cement industry. Because uh, cement is uh, almost a uniform, um, uh, I mean, texture. I mean, the properties will remain same. A yeah. tire will be same, like a scooter tire and a car tire. It will be almost same. Whatever, maybe the dimensions like 15 inch or 17 inch in case we prepare, we manufacture. Uh, JK tires will do, MRF tires will do, C8 will do the same dimensions. Dimensions will not vary. Hmm. And the same thing applies for a bottling, like water, water, uh, uh, kill, or maybe in case we hmm. see the aquafina. Water taste may little vary, but water is a water. Hmm. It, it is a completely, but uh, we have uh, IRTCS, in case we go railway stations, we charge a 15 rupees a bottle. Others hmm. charge 20 rupees. 20 rupees, it has not changed for more, maybe for the last 10 years. The price has hmm. not changed. But the new companies have started coming up. And new companies also mm -hmm. have put up the price at 20 only. They have not actually increased or decreased. But uh, some flavor water is coming now, some flavor yeah. water. So mm -hmm. the flavor water, they're charging 30, 40, something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, or maybe one liter will be reduced to 800 ml only, yeah. uh, something like that. Uh, so I you... just uh, want to see whether I can apply this one in a practical sense to understand the concept better. Thank you, sir. See, but if you go to airport and you buy a half liter water bottle, it will cost you like three, four times what you have bought at railway station or at somewhere in anywhere outside the airport. It's mainly, uh, it depends on, now here, uh, we don't see any kind of a competition between the, among the farms. So what everyone has done here means we we have not covered this topic. There is something called a cartel or a collusion. So that is that they will not compete in terms of their price, but they can compete like you will not find uh, that much advertisement of, of local water 
local brand uh, water bottle means packet bottle but compared to like kinle or like bislery mm, they will advertise much much more so in these situations what is happening competition is happening in terms of the advertisement so they want to uh, gather as many consumers as, as possible and that is based on uh, advertisement they do rather than competing in terms of price so that is also you can derive as a nash equilibrium outcome where means suppose there are two variables in which you can decide one is the amount of advertisement you want to do and another is the kind of price that you want to set and uh, and you can add one more thing that is the quality of the product now here uh, we are assuming in case of water bottle that the quality is remaining more or less same but what the farms are doing now suppose there are two farms and one farmer has decided that it is only going to compete in terms of advertisement then it may happen that the optimal strategy of the other farm is also to compete in terms of advertisement and not in terms of price so they set the, both the farms set the same price in, and they compete in terms of advertisement so it can be means can be understood as a optimal strategy of the farm okay yes sir thank you Any other question? So should we stop here or we should continue? If you do not have any question, then or do you want to explain me something? So feel free to ask question and also in the discussion forum, I Sir, I just want to check one thing. Yeah. It is uh, largely based upon the complete information only, no? Yeah, in this course, we are doing only complete because incomplete information is it will take another course. You, you so, said that one in the beginning. A, yeah, in the introductory hmm. thing, you, you said that yeah. part. Yeah. I just want to make a small case study. I mean, my interest of yeah. doing this uh, course or maybe applying one concept because every concept I cannot really understand and uh, uh, do it. I just want to prepare a one page case study with respect to some industry on this and uh, uh, share maybe with the MBA graduates or some kind of a BBA graduates uh, okay. on this. That, that's, that's one idea. Hmm. Uh, like like travel agencies uh, uh, pricing in case travel agencies pricing is is a uh, whether I can apply this one over there 
or hotel hotel industry whether i can uh, apply or maybe the uh, the the uh, home delivery guys home delivery zomato and all those guys uh, uh, yeah yeah see, yeah i think you can apply it means uh, see there you have to be very specific about the nature of the demand like when you means whether this demand is like a continuous thing or not like each individual wants to demand one unit of that good or they want some some unit which is some unit more than one or some infraction also like that so if it is like each individual wants one unit then you can take uh, something like a hoteling kind of thing that we will do later on means okay then you, if, if the, those videos are available, you can look at that section, that is product differentiation. So there we, we, we also derive the demand curve, but it is going to be slightly different. And then you can follow that to do those kind of things. And like um, when we're talking about travel agency. So in travel agency kind of thing here, mainly the individuals are going to consume each like the good that is the service is like a one unit right so then what kind of competition we are going to see so i think you can simply apply the hoteling model there and it should be giving you but we have not done the hoteling model in that great detail because the what we have assumed there as is that they only decide on their location and the price is fixed. But you can take that as also variable and then look at, but in the case of two form, uh, the, when we introduce the price as also as a variable, that is we take a two stage thing. In the first stage, they decide the location or that is the uh, nature of degree of product differentiation, or you can say the degree of quality of the product. In <clears throat> the second, uh, they decide the price, so their price is not a continuous function, price uh, profit function. So the optimization is slightly tricky in the that. So that's why I have dropped that price thing, second stage. I have only considered that suppose the price is fixed. So that, that is generally done in the preliminary courses or any introductory courses. But in your case, if you are taking suppose travel industry there what you can do you specify the variables in which they are competing like if you take the example of make my trip their revenue source it's very difficult to say whether the charge the convenience charge that they are taking whether that is the source of their revenue because now what they have done they have converted it into a platform so there is a lot of advertisement that takes place in their website so they charge for that also. So there it may be that if you take yeah, multiple a very sources, low convenience yeah. sales, multiple low convenience, of revenue. Yeah. yeah, low convenience fee, then what happens? Lot of people visit your website. The moment lot of people visit your website, you can charge more on your advertisement. So that is one. And in this kind of market, there is also something called a network effect. That is, suppose you have some 10 to 15, suppose you have a 100 fixed buyer who always make their uh, tickets in the make my trip. Then what is going to happen? They will have some friends or they may be sometimes booking their tickets for their friends or their any other member of the family member, then they are going to use it. So this, there is a, this is a network effect. That is that if the average number of user is higher, then the, the it is very easy to get an one more additional user. So, so that, and so those kind of things work actually. So you can try that. And you, if you you can do it and then upload it in the discussion forum, then we can comment on it also. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you very
Okay then. So, so it was. So I will stop here. It was nice talking to all of you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Okay, okay. You have one question. One, one. Chat box. Okay. Okay, then I will stop here. Thank you.